Hello and welcome back to episode 14 of the Championship Manager Lockdown Challenge here on Championship Manager 2 1997-1998 even. And today we are starting this, uh, the third part of the of this challenge, so season 3. As you can see we're in the 18th of September. We're, there's quite a lot to talk about so I do always say try and keep them short. This one I expect there's a lot to catch up on since that last um, sort of catch up episode itself I guess. So um if you're new here first of all please do drop a sub to the channel if you like what you're seeing like this content like this save like this game all that good stuff drop a like on the video as well and all that good stuff that just helps me sort of you know keep going keep going with it um this season i think is gonna be a bit of a struggle this is probably the part of the challenge i'm maybe least excited about but then it's also a division i've never managed in before so i'm gonna pop the the challenge up on the screen now so obviously as you can see we've had to by the 15th, 16th of July even, we had to sort of get a job in the second tier of Spanish football. Unfortunately, that didn't come up. Um, so we had to, um, yeah, we had to create a manager. So we get no bonus for that. So zero points for that. Um, I've kept the other profile, the other manager running. So he's getting off with jobs, but I have resigned as manager of Fulham. So we will sort of keep an eye on them as well because they were her, our baby for the first two seasons. Um, we've got a final points total in the league. We've got a promotion bonus. We've got goal scored by top goal scorer. Um, goal scored for every goalkeeper, which we'll get to in a bit as well. Um, and minus 10 for every player averaging under seven at the end of the season. That's the tough bit. And we're not allowed to release those players that aren't living up to standards at the end of the season. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be tough. Um, in the last episode, I did ask in the comments to just drop down about the promotion and relegation. Um, now the game was updated, gone to the next season, that actually happened. There must have just been a tick-off date for that or something. But all those three that were in the relegation places and all those three that were in the promotion places, they've all switched. They've all so they've relegated and promoted. I'm um, not sure why it delays it, but it does. Um, so in terms of our job, so like I say, I had to create a manager. So I put this to a poll on Twitter. It's so basically as, as we were essentially creating a new manager, it gave me the choice of clubs. I wasn't you know restricted to to what was available so i looked through the teams and there was two that took my eye mostly for money um, the money they had so we had albacete and salamanca uh one had about three point something million one had about 2.8 million probably not the biggest reputation clubs so a lot of that has maybe been from selling better players maybe to bigger clubs but there were clubs like celta vigo in here villarreal in here but i needed some money to probably strengthen what they had as well because they've obviously just they're not in the top flight anymore lost some of their best players and yeah so i thought you know what even if i have to get some averagey reputation players that maybe can do a job for me in the system we're going to play then that will do so i put it to the poll and it was a clear swing for salamanca which i'm kind of glad they had the least money of the two but um they've got a kind of historic connection to my team arsenal i think we used to send players there on loan one of the comments in the poll mentioned um carlos vela i think he went there as well so yeah um, in terms of Fulham, we are replaced uh, by Big Jack, Big Jack Charlton. So we'll keep an eye on that. He left Crystal Palace to go there. And Crystal Palace then offered me the job. So it would have been a proper managerial roundabout. Um, yeah, but, at, you know, through that wind period up to the 16th of July, we had Alaves sat, did sack their manager. Um, but it didn't come up in the job list, which was strange. I thought maybe they'd been relegated um, out of Division 2. And that was the problem. I mean, around this time, they were in the top division because they got to the European final against Liverpool didn't they in 2001 when Liverpool won practically everything but the league um, but if that had happened the promoted team would have replaced them because it happened in England Kidderminster appeared but it didn't happen I don't know what happened there was obviously a glitch there or something I don't know or I've, I've got no idea um, lots of French clubs sacked their managers um, some English clubs as well obviously it wasn't good for us um, we, were high, we were hoping that switch over the season the update there'd be some retirements nothing really happened this one happened though um, FC Borges, Borges um, they sacked Bobby Brown, um, popping that on the screen now, um, which I guess was the board's prerogative, and from now on he's going to have to do it all on his own, all on his own. A um, couple of Bobby Brown jokes there, just in case you're not quite as old as me to get those references, um, and with Ghostbusters coming out as well soon, which I'm really excited, I want to see that. Wasn't It wasn't on our own soundtrack to the second film, I think, or maybe the first one, I think it was the second one. Um, in that time as well, we Craven Cottage was expanded. Uh, Guy Roo retired at Auxerre um, after just winning the, the league, which we saw in the update last season. Uh, so Bobby Robson did retire from Wolves. Obviously, neither of those were any good to us, so whatever. 
Valencia sacked Renieri. They just survived and would have been the perfect club to have taken. But they survived in the top of the flight by one place and I think about two points. Um, they hired Bottegreno as the player manager from nowhere. So no job come from him taking it. Yeah, um, what we'll do, we're going to have a quick look at transfers around the world. Because um, there's been some interesting ones. So Henrik Larsson has gone to Sociedad. Uh, Terry Cook has gone Man United to Darlington. I had my eye on him for ages because uh, obviously I changed manager. I've lost my um, I've lost my. Oh, is he an option? No, we're not big enough for him to be have that big club release clause triggered. Even though I'm sure we're bigger than uh, than uh, Darlington. But yeah, I need a right midfielder. We've changed system, which we'll come to in a bit. Carl uh, Heinz Riedler has gone to Everton from Liverpool, making that switch across Stanley Park. Uh, Jamie Day is Man City to Man United. A few, see what I mean? There's some few rivalries uh, transfers in here. I've noticed some big ones. So I'm going to just see if anything kind of jumps out here. Um, I think a lot of them are more in Italy and Spain than in than in England. Uh, French transfers. I think there was one or two here. PSG, if I recall, made quite a big signing. Well, it's not sh showing at the moment. Maybe they sold someone. I thought I saw a big PSG transfer. I'm not seeing it. Um, Henrik Larsson we know about. Uh, maybe it's not going quite far. Oh, is it not going far back enough? Let's go. Let's go back a month. So last month, August. So that's obviously when the window opened. Let's go back. Is there anything in July? Right, let's go to July. So Jamie Redknapp went to Arsenal from Liverpool. In this month, Teddy Sheridan went from Man United to Liverpool. Another rival you don't see happen very often. Reggie Blink has gone from Port Vale to Brentford. Okay. I do remember seeing him at Port Vale, actually, because we come up against him, and I was surprised then. Steve Haslam's gone to Stockport. That's a shame, because I would have quite liked to have brought him in. But I've lost all my... Matthew Brazier. Wasn't he... Oh, it's not the same one. We had a we had a Brazier, didn't we? Uh, it's not the same one. Uh, let's see who else. Lee Hughes. So, we didn't sign him. He was on our shortlist for ages. Wasn't available. They've gone and signed him anyway. They obviously liked the scout report that we put in. Um, when he came available, they spent the money on him anyway. Um, as you can see, there's a few Salamanca transfers there, which we'll touch upon in a moment, because there's some interesting ones. So there's some good ones. Um, they won't recognise the, the name necessarily, but there are some good players in there. Canu goes to Arsenal, reflecting real life, probably about this sort of time as well, actually. Strange enough, Peter Nielsen's gone to Man United from Juventus. Liverpool to Palmer for Nerlinger. Leonardo's gone to Newcastle from Rosenberg. I didn't even know he'd gone to Rosenberg. I mean, what a drop down that is because he's a great player in this game as well. Um, I had my eye on this guy. He's the re he's the is he a regen of someone? I mean, I think he is. No, he's not. Oh, yeah, he is, but I don't know who it is. It wasn't one that came up on my thing. I did run that again, and uh, we have signed some of them. Bobby Keane's gone to QPR. I think we did look at him, but we decided against it. Um, who else is there? I don't think there's anything else big in there. No. Uh, no. I guess last and a few Arsenal players leaving. Uh, that's there. And then September we... I think we saw, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, that was British. And then in the French, uh, if we go back to July. So Trezeguet's gone from Monaco to PSG. That's the one I remember seeing. Sahar's gone from Anderlecht to Montpellier. Uh, where does he start in the game? I think he starts at Newcastle. Do you know what? Forward right. We need one of those. So is he available? No, he's only just gone. Of course, he isn't. What am, I, what am I talking about? Plus, he's at a bigger club than us. So he ain't going to sign for us. And we probably can't afford him, even if he would. Uh, nothing there. No. August Zidane went to PSG. That's the one. Another one I saw. Frederick Canute. I think I mentioned him at one point, saying he always moves. Aaron Vinter's gone. Sebastian Frey is gone. Been some, Teddy Lucic has gone. There's been some big moves in France. Sorry about that. I heard a delivery coming. I thought it might have been for us, but it was for next door, I think. Um, we, we knew that obviously PSG won the Champions League two years on the bounce. They're making some big news moves, adding Zidane in. And Opco's gone to Nantes on a free transfer. Wow, Toldo to Marseille. A lot of free transfers going in. A lot of contracts running out in uh, 2000 and, uh, 2000? 1999 even. Uh, if we go back to July here, Raul's gone from Real Madrid to Barcelona. As you can see, some big... Big rivalry moves, some big moves happening um, in this game. So Pinto, I know the name, but I can't think why. Uh, anyone else? Mm. Not seeing anyone at the moment. A couple there for us again, which we'll touch upon. I'll go through the transfers in a moment, ins and outs. Uh, I'll show you the team, I'll show you the tactic we're doing. So we have had, we have had a bit of a tactical shape up. And obviously I've built a team based on sticking 
with what we had latest transfers anything in here that's not been picked up by them i don't think so the three leagues are the main ones so if we go into salamanca so this is our team as it stands at the moment uh quite full we just freed someone who hadn't played to try and bring in another right midfielder because we are struggling we've got one who we brought in which i'll touch upon again like i say um but he's injured and we've got no one else who can play on the right so ins uh, a few of these are before our time so he before our time him i think he's listed no he's not he has played he's not played very well uh before our time not playing and then this is our first signing Ivor johnson now this is a goalkeeper who we put in i think 18 or 19 on set pieces and he come up uh, obviously it's blacked out on the right hand side you can't see that stat but he is i don't think he's a very good goalkeeper and he's not piped up with any goals or assists just yet but we're hoping we're hoping he's had a couple of good seasons at nardo whoever they are but yeah, he comes in on a free transfer. There wasn't many to choose from, to be honest. He was the best of them, but we need to try and get that. I've got him on pens and free kicks. Um, we've got Simon Mao. Now, he is the regen of Peter Beardsley. Um, he's, he's dropped down the last couple of games, primarily because I've had to shift him out on the right on the right wing. Uh, so he's below seven rating, not so good. We need to get that back up. Uh, John Conway is Paul McGrath's reincarnation. And again, a lot of good stats in there. A few things that need some work, but he's only 17. And a lot of things to work there. He's already played one game, got a seven. Uh, we actually lost that game, so not great. Uh, Faustino Rubinelson. I'll let you guess who he is. He has big hair and plays for Colombia. That's right, it's Carlos Valderrama. Uh, great sign, and we picked him up for 15k from Millenaros. I think he might have had a link to them in the past in real life. Um, I might be wrong. Uh, we then signed up this guy, Karen... Barsagian, I saw his name. He was on my shortlist at Fulham and I remembered him. We saw him banging in goals for Armenia. I don't know how or why we saw it. I think when we looked at the the uh, European Championship qualifiers in the last episode, I saw his name and you can see he's got seven goals and 17 and those seven are in the last nine. Uh, not doing quite so well for us, but we have just changed system. Got him for 60k from Ararat. Uh, he's had a couple of good goal scoring seasons, so hopefully he can uh, kick on for us. Uh, we've got Lois Bormate, Boa Morte on loan. I did try and sign him, but he wanted too much in wages. So someone else went in for him on loan. We jumped in, and I don't think we're going to have him for much longer. He's wanted, and he's playing quite well. Um, this guy is Laris and Mariasson. Uh, we need another forward when we're playing the, the free forwards. Uh, we were a little bit short in that area. Not done too well just yet, but he's still young. But this is everyone's favourite Icelandic regen. Um, is it Arna? Oh, I've got, I forget what his actual name is in real life. I, I never actually look at it. It's Arna Johnson or Gunnarsson I can't remember his name but if you look up for a defensive midfielder forward centre in Iceland after a couple of years he goes on a on a free uh, goes on a, becomes a young player obviously a regen and he's fantastic and we picked him up for 5k from IBV uh, without playing a game uh, we needed a right back when we were playing a right back we're not anymore <laughs> um, he's not done great he's going to cost us points at the end of the season uh, he's got good stats and good attributes hasn't quite delivered at right back and won't be probably delivering at all anymore unless we change back um we've got milan milan milovanovic brought him in as a left back he's now playing as a cdm probably better in that position uh 5k from yeah i'm not pronouncing that uh, his name was hard enough uh, we've got marco rose again when we needed a left back we bought two left backs we now don't play any and we've got about four in the club <laughs> two i can't shift and two we brought in obviously real life manager of munching glad back i think in the bundesliga uh, brought him in 350k now bought him in for 130k from leipzig i'm guessing that's rb leipzig who you know got replaced uh paulo vida we needed a right midfielder we needed a forward actually and he he came in luckily he plays on the right so we are working on getting another one in at the moment that's why i freed that player that i mentioned at the start we've got eugenio petiziol and he's a striker from Italy. He's done okay in his two appearances. We did actually play him out of position unknowingly when I changed the formation. I forgot to move one of the strikers. And he played in midfield and got a goal um, in the last game. So he's doing okay. Five, uh, 625k from Udinese. I don't know much about him. He's a regen. Oh, no, he's a regen somewhere, isn't he? I don't know who from. But he's he's done okay. And then we've got Justo Sanchez, age 19. He's got some fantastic attributes. Whether he's going to come good on those, I don't know. I don't know. He's got a five in his first game. Uh, off the bench he's got two caps for Bolivia though how hard that is I don't know but he's he's on loan from Velez who I mean I've always loved Boca and River Plate but I've got a real affinity for Velez from an old football manager save I, I did before it was on a blog actually it was when I blogged before I YouTubed and um, I did a uh, what do you call it a pentagon challenge and they were my South American team and 
I just got a bit of an affinity for them now, really. One of those teams. Let me know in the comments below. What teams do you have, you know, a real affinity for that come from nothing other than playing football manager, championship manager, that sort of thing. Saves you've done. You know, Salamanca, I've, I've picked this team because of the connection of, of being a feeder club at Arsenal. You know, it, that's the only reason I went for this, you know, pick those out of the two, really. Or put those in as one of the options for the two. Um, so this is the team. Uh, we've got a few notable players in here that you might recognise. I say a few, probably one, um, in terms of who who is already here. And that's this guy, Pedro Pauletta. Now, I think that's Pauletta who went on to play for PSG. Again, he's got some good rounded attributes and he might get his chance now if you change system. He's done okay uh, in the years he's been at Salamanca, but not amazing. So we need to try and get a bit more out of him. We've got this guy playing quite well. He looks quite good as well. He is wanted. We might cash in because we've got a few forwards and we might be able to bring maybe someone better in. Depends on Bayern Morte's situation. If we lose him, we are screwed. Um, Ruben Nelson's out for about a week. He's picked up a bit of injury. Vida's out, I think, a few more weeks now. Yeah, he was out for a month. He's, he's still out. Um, tactics. So we was deploying the same sort of 4-2-3-1 that we were playing with Fulham to great success. Um, not mean, meaning to sound like Borat at, at all there. But we've changed it up to a Nikolai tactic. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a Nikolai tactic. So go and check him out. I think his details are in my descriptions in, in all my videos. Go and check him out on Twitter. He puts some random stuff up. This is the one I've, I've picked. And we've used it for one game and it's done okay. And I've just realised I didn't look at the outs. So I'll show you the outs because we, obviously we've got some money. We've got about 2.8 left. We started with about 2.8. So as you can imagine, we've sold some out as well. So as you can see, you won't know who any of these guys are. But we've you know got some decent money in there. A few we freed as well. Cost us a little bit of money. But largely, actual Smeets, I recognise his name for some reason. Um... We've largely got some decent fees in there. We've got a few more wanted, so if we can if we can get rid of them as well, um, we'll have a bit more space to play with because we're at, it's, it's more space. But some of these we can't free. Like Lana, I recognise him from Roma, um, but he, it's going to cost him half a million to to free him from his contract. Bogdan Stelia, we've got as well, um, good goalkeeper. But with this league, I've picked up. You can have the five subs, which is good, and four foreign players. As you can see, we've got quite a lot of foreigners, um, so we've had to drop a few. We probably need another centre-back coming in soon, more experienced one. Conway is quite good as McGrath, but really we've got a couple listed and then really only got one or two others. We, If we stick with this tactic that we're employing, then we are going to um, try and move on some of those players as well. Now, if we go to the shortlist quickly, there's a couple of other um, players that, uh, that uh, regens have appeared for. Now, this guy is banging them in for Las Palmas. I don't know who he is. But we're keeping an eye on him. But I think largely they, they beat someone 10 nil in a cup in one leg. And I think most of those come in that game. We're not big enough for him to come to us. I think they're in the top flight as well, maybe even. Um, but we've got this guy here. That is Andreas Kopka. Uh, Holger Netzel. He's not available. He's gone straight to Karlsruhe. So we'll be trying to pick him up if we can. We will keep an eye on Habib Sissoko. I don't know. He's just in the game. He's at Preston at the start. But he's got good attributes. But we've signed some other strikers for the time being. Um, we've got Harry van der Brink is... Who was he? He was... Who was he? Harry van der Brink. I've just looking at my notes. He's Danny Blind. So we'll be trying to... He's listed for loan. We'll try and get him in. We might have to free someone for a bit of money if we do get him. Uh, we've got... Is he some... He is, but I don't think... He, do we know about him? Delbeck. Who was he? Was he on my list? I think he might be just be someone we found. No, he is. He's Paul Le Guin. He's unavailable, but he's wanted by Lons. I imagine he's got a big club release clause. He has, and they will probably trigger it. We can't. We're still looking at Billy McDonald. He's out of contract, but he's just not interested, unfortunately. Um, Julio Sanchez, we know about. That's Andre Shevchenko, or Andre Shevchenko, as he is on this game. He's started a game for them. Uh, he's listed for loan. He wasn't available at all a little while ago. Hmm. This guy, I need a right winger. He wants 12k, 12 grand a week. We can't afford it. <laughs> he comes off the list. And Don Kelly is Andy Townsend. Might be someone we bring in because we are now playing with two DMs. Uh, but we've got enough, I think. We've got the Icelandic guy who can cover if needed. Uh, in terms of results, there's a couple of other players that regen as well. Um, trying to think who who was there. The, the, uh, Pietro Vieshawad did. Uh, Steve Walsh did. Ray Wilkins did. Um, who else did Eric Demeco left back at Monaco did I think he's no is it Mexico Monaco I might be wrong with Monaco but he's a left back Belgian left back 
Enzo Francescoli did, Vaclav Kadlec did, um, Miquel Soler did, but they've not been worth picking up or not been able to pick up and I haven't got space on my shortlist. I've got better spaces on my shortlist. Um, Fixture-wise, bit of a mixed bag this season so far, uh, to, in all honesty. We've got to 20 minutes and we haven't played a game yet. Um, we might just do the one game, maybe two today, just to keep it brief. But we got Deportivo as a draw in the cup in the Copa del Rey first round. I mean, what a tie. We went 2 0 down. And to be fair, probably a quite good quite good value for a two all draw, to be honest. 2 0 down, two quite quick fire goals. I think that's Pizzi who plays for Okay, yeah, I was gonna say Barcelona. I knew he moved around Madrid as well in this game, but they've sold him on with hardly playing him, to be honest. But Bo Morte and Peter Beardsley or Peter Beardsley getting hit the equaliser there late on. Don't know why I did that impression. It's absolutely woeful. Um, and then we lost our opening game of the season to Le Leganes. Leganes, I think that's pronounced. We took the lead in the game quite early on. We weren't really at the races, to be fair. I was going to say we deserved more out of this match. But looking at the stats, we didn't. But I think that was quite a late rally from them. But they got you know, quite a, a, a good goal. Out, and then out of nothing, they made it 2-1. It seemed like straight away, but it wasn't. They went to 10 men. We didn't push on. They actually looked like they were going to get a third uh, at that point really um, and then the, we didn't manage to sort of turn around the away goals or the result against Deportivo unsurprisingly really let's be honest uh, but Barcesian opened his account despite playing a six got a goal and hopefully he can build on that for the rest of the season uh, we then followed that up with a 2-1 win against Villarreal who obviously were top at the time actually and just come down uh, from the top division last season they still got Ili Dimitrescu so good player there but he's not really doing much this season for them but with a good 2-1 win there um, pretty good value. They got two shots on target and scored one of them. That's that what we saw last season. But Beaumorte again and Barcesian again. B and B coming up big. Um, and then Elche uh, lost two one in that game. Goalkeeper got run out of match. I assume it's because he took a few pot shots with his free kicks. Not really sure, but we were probably good value for a draw in that game and we're a bit unlucky. But we did get a lot of injuries as well. That's where we lost the two players that we're currently missing right now. We had a couple of players um, on international duty and missing as well. Um, for this game which wasn't ideal uh, and then we followed that up with a 1-0 win this is where we changed the system against Levante and came up good 1-0 we should have probably had a bit of a cricket score in all honesty I'm surprised they didn't score that one shot on target um, yeah I think we'll just do the one game today and it's against oh no you know we're going to do the two because Alba is coming up and that's the team that we chose not to not to uh, not to manage so I think that's all we need to catch up on I say all it's taken 20 minutes to catch up but there we are. Um, so we jump into the game. Oh, it's just, come on. What's going on? And Barcesian with a flick on. Diego, he's in there primarily because we've got too many foreigners. He wants to leave because he, he needs football. And also we've got um, Carlos Valderrama injured as well. So a bit of jigging around when he does come back because I think he's the best centre midfielder we've got. Um, but Diego, he looks good. He's got good attributes. Uh, we're just trying to keep him happy as we go 1-0 up. And I think that's Velisca, the, the sort of striker playing in the attacking midfield position at the moment. It is Barcesian, two, two, two goals in two minutes. And what a way to come back. Obviously, we, oh, it's been disallowed. We, we want him, his goals. Oh, and then he misses. He did this in the other game. He, he should have had a hat-trick. He got, he got his first goal and then he should have had a hat-trick. I think it's a Deportivo match. He should have had a hat-trick, maybe four. And he just... If he'd have done that, we'd have been back in the tie, but maybe even gone through. But unfortunately, he didn't. He's a bit wasteful. Uh, but he's probably one of our good chances for Beaumorte. I was going to say he's one of our good chances for top goal scorer in the bonus this season. But Beaumorte, he's, he's, he's coming up with a few goals, to be fair. He, he's probably above his level in this game. And Velisca, I've got a player we've kind of put in just for, not the sake of it, but as kind of cover and because we've got other players sort of playing in other positions. But... He's doing the job. He's scoring the goals. To be fair, he, he looks quite good. He is wanted. And I was saying we might sell him, but I might have to uh, rethink that idea. Um, regarding the goalkeeper, I've not seen him take any free kicks yet. They've all been... There you go. There was another one. They're all indirect. There's no direct free kicks has happened yet. Obviously, if and when we get a penalty, he'll be stepping up. And then we'll see what he can do. And if he can grab one, hopefully it won't be a vital time that we end up losing the game or something. But... Um, as we mentioned with the challenge, obviously we've got to keep players' average ratings up. So I'm a little bit reluctant to do too many subs in this save. I do want to see what that striker can do as we let one in. Um, because I don't want a... I don't want to take a player off who's on a six. Because I want him leaving him on the pitch to get the chance to get it up to a seven. 
Um, but also, I don't want to bring a player on with not enough time to make an impact and end up getting a six as well. And it's just not good. And I think that's Barsegian. I, I need to come up with another name for him. What can I call him? I don't know. I need some nicknames. I've, I've got some nicknames for some of the players, which I sometimes use looking at the team, but not so much on the video, which I need to try and remember them for the video. Um, I just sort of say them as I see them on the screen rather than going by the nicknames. When I'm sort of putting tactics together or the, or the formation together or the team together, that sort of thing, or talking about it, when I'm writing down my notes as what happened in the games, I kind of have a nickname. But yeah, I'll have to think of some. Same with Petizio. I don't know how to pronounce that very easily. <laughs> um, obviously, we've got Peter Beardsley. He's the mailman. He's the postman. We're going to call him the postman um, for obvious reasons. We've got a few others. Valde, I mean, we've got Valderrama. I can't say his name quickly, so we're probably just going to keep calling him Carlos. Not too sure. Probably stick with that. But we've got Alba Sati next. We'll come back for that game. Okay, here we are. We're back on Saturday. I assume this is when the game is. I haven't had a quick look. I've just seen it Saturday and assume it probably is. There have been a few transfers um, and a few bids as well. So latest transfers. If we go down a little bit, I don't know how far we need to go. So Marcelo Villado has gone to Arsenal. I didn't see that one. Um, I don't know how far back I need to go, really. It's the deadline day has just happened. So probably not too far. Uh... Albert Saladez has gone from Valencia to Espanyol. He's an ex Barca. I think he played for Real Madrid at some point. I might be wrong with that. But uh, Patrick Vieira has gone to Atletico Madrid from Arsenal. Paolo Souza has gone to Real Madrid from Inter. He turned down Barcelona in the process. Uh, in terms of ourselves, uh, we sold a few players. Uh, I think we sold. No, we, we had a bid for Valesca. He's not wanted anymore. We considered it by accident and then rejected it, obviously. Um, we've signed Pedretti. Uh, he can play on that right hand side. He's done okay. We had a two to choose from. We chose him. We tried to get um, defensive cover with uh, Danny Blinn's um, regen. Unfortunately, it hasn't happened. We've now got Pauletta wanted. Okay. We might, we might put Pauletta on the bench, actually. But we're going to stick... Who's? I think it's the mailman out on the right at the moment, isn't it? So we're going to stick Pedretti in. That was a good performance in the last game. But um, do you know what? We're going to transfer list... All those players we just signed on the right and the left. We don't. And the deadline, the window shuts. I don't even know why I'm doing it, to be honest, because they're not going to they're not gonna be picked up. Unless other clubs' windows are still open. Other leagues. Yeah, other leagues' windows will be open still. So hopefully, there's a bit of interest there. We might transfer this to him as well. I only kept him because we needed three of them. And we didn't have many. And we couldn't get any. Uh, but we don't need him, to be honest. Um, we need the space in the team to try and spend some of that money on. We're still... Still on 2.5 million, despite the fact we signed him for 325k from Parma. Um, not making much drama in Parma, but oh, we need a centre back. We sold one of them. <laughs> to be fair, we've got Alex on the bench. Uh, we might stick. Who do we stick? I'm going to stick Darius. I think he's probably one of the better better options, perhaps. Yeah, I think that we'll go with that. Um, Carlos. Valderrama is back, but not fit enough. Let's jump into the game. It's home to Abacete, as we knew. We're fifth, they're 20th. We'll have a look at the league table at the end of this game. See where that leaves us. But that was a good performance last, last time out. So I don't want to, as we're about to go one down, then I thought, I don't want to rock the boat with the squad too much, um, really. So I've not made too many changes. I just brought in that new guy, Pedretti, see what he can do. Um, the goalkeeper has been given a yellow card. So he's had a yellow card before he's had a... Free kick or penalty as we go 1-0 down from his resulting the resulting free kick, which is absolutely fantastic. But hopefully we've got enough in us to mount something back into this game. There we go. 29 minutes. I think it was Barsagian. If you got any ideas, oh it's Pet right, both of them. Petizio, Barsagian. Oh, another injury. If you've got any ideas for Do you know what we might bring Daras in? No, do you know what we're gonna bring um the Icelandic legend in. See what he can do at DM. He can play there. Barsagian gets the goal. Yeah, that... Obviously, as they're up front, they can be the partnership. They can be BP. Um, but any individual nicknames for them, let me know in the comments down below. I'll probably be a few episodes on before I see those comments because we're a while away from releasing this episode, um, in all honesty. Uh, let's see. But 2-1. We've turned it around before half-time. Hopefully, we can keep the goals out at one end and maybe stick a few more in. At the right end, we'll, we'll try and bring Paletta on, see if we can just get his rating up a little bit. And, oh, we've got a penalty, anyway. Yes! Do we get any points for penalty saves? I don't think we do. There's no bonuses for that. 
Oh, two all. They, they've gone and scored anyway, a minute later. Presumably the same attack, I don't really know. They've taken one of their goal scorers off. I think we might be about to do the same, to be honest. Or we're going to go... We might be about to go three up front. I think we need to get... I think we need to get a result, a win here. Uh, Bermorte is coming off. Paletta's going on. Valeska's going in on the left. It's uh, about all we can do, really. And we're going to win another penalty. Oh, we're going to win another penalty then. That would have been harsh. I don't think we deserve a, a loss here. A draw, is, I think, is a little bit harsh. I think... Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd say us winning or a draw would be the right result. Us losing would not be right. Let's have a look at the stats. Yeah, I mean, we, we had the same amount of shots. We had better possession, but the shots on target, I mean, they scored two of their three. For a team in 20th, that's far too good, <laughs> really, let's be honest. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to have a look at where we're going to come back. Okay, so here we are at the league table. So we're going to see where we're coming back. So we're sixth, so... We're 8th at the moment. We're on 10 points. We're a good 8 points behind top. Yes. I mean, we're in we're in this kind of third downwards. We're still in, you know, well in for that. I mean, we're not far off. Nah, we're, we're, we're decently off the bottom, aren't we? Oh, Bacero, is that the guy? I thought it was the guy who came. We had at Fulham. Uh, in fact, speaking of Fulham, we'll go see how they're getting on, actually, under uh, Big Jack. Um, Fixture-wise, we're going to come back for... I would like to have shown Barcelona B. I should have gone a bit further and done that now, really. But we're probably going to be coming back sort of mid... Yeah, Las Palmas-y kind of around there at November time. That's normally around the sort of time I come back. And then... Oh, there is a bit of a winter break in this one. So we could maybe push on a little bit more. Maybe. As this has been a longer episode, maybe we'll, we'll do that and maybe um, play a few more games next, next episode and play a few more in between and see how we go in that regard. Let's have a look at Fulham. Competition info, English Premier Division, League Table. How are Fulham? Sixth. Not bad. Three wins, six draws. Invincible season on the cards. We didn't manage that at all. Tetzner's wanted by Rochdale. He's on loan. Have they bought anyone? No. Lee Hughes is, is it. Uh, no one out. So he's kind of largely going with the same squad. What's he playing? 4-4-2. Four, 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 fucking two. Lecchetti on the right wing. Okay, Laurent on the left wing. Very defensive wingers. Uh, Twist and Neverland up front. Notman and Centurion. Very attacking middle, to be fair. Sigurdsson on the left back. Curtis, Heidenstrom, McInesby. Okay, okay. Not quite... He's got the wrong personnel, really, to be playing 4-4-2. But he's, he's sticking with it. He's sticking with his... What he knows from Ireland. I mean... It works at Ireland. It's working for them. They're, in, they're invincible. Direct, direct, of course. Who's out on the penalties and corners? Alex Notman's on everything. Captain is, is John Curtis. Um, who's doing their goals? So, value John Curtis. Uh, I'm looking at the wrong thing for goals. No, I'm not. Assist. Nevlin with two. Laurent with two. Tomlinson with two. Notman with one. Twist, Curtis and Centurion. Goals. Eric Nevlin, of course. Five in ten. Not a bad return rate. Not quite going to be what he did for us last year, I don't think. If he keeps at that rate, he needs to improve to do that. But he's doing well. He's doing well. Um, anyone else there particularly doing well? No, nothing jumps out. Top ratings. I mean, he's playing Tetzner as number one. Has Arenze gone? No, he's still there. He's, he's just a bit old now. He's, he's not picking him. We got we got a lot out of him. So, you know. But they're, they're doing okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll check on them, every, you know, periodically and see how they're doing. But that's the end of this episode. So we're going to cut it there. Uh, it's been a long, it's been a long enough one. This one, but they always are. I do apologise, but they always are at the start of the season because there's a lot to plough through. I play a lot of games. There's a lot of transfers. This one had talk of teams and what teams we were taking on, managerial stuff, um, retirements, that sort of stuff. But um, if you've enjoyed today's video, please do drop a like. Um, if you do prefer the longer ones, let me know because I'll happily do that and maybe play a bit longer and put a bit of a longer video up. If you do want them to be a bit shorter, I'll try and figure that out somehow as well. Maybe stop jab jabbering on for so much and for so long. Um, drop a sub to the channel while you're here as well um, all that good stuff and until next time when we come back for the next row of fixtures in uh, part 2 of season 3 of the lockdown challenge I'll see you next time, take care